hook on the other side. Bad blind hem stitches is that you can see the stitch. This one had difficulty because she had obviously not done it very often before. So you can see long stitching across the top, but because it's in the color of the fabric, it doesn't show up a lot. And it's not horrible. So you might deduct a point, a part of a point, like point zero, uh, point zero 0.01 or two points for making that him show. It shouldn't be you know, detrimental to the beast because it does not, in the long run, from a distance, show up. But close up, you can see it. And remember, court garb is judged more on the complexity. This matters more because people are up close to each other when they're seeing a feast event. So when it's tiny, that's perfect. When they're long stitches, that's wrong. This stitch is made for hemming. However, you may hand stitch a hem, and that is the best way to do it, where you take a stitch that goes through both, then you come down and take a stitch again, and then you iron the tar out of it to make sure it stays put. So those are the ways to hem. And another point with hemming is when it lays out, it needs to be straight. So when you see a hem, it needs to not do this kind of wrinkly thing because somebody didn't check their hems. Or worse yet, the dress hikes up in the back when it's being worn. So if you have somebody who's turned it in a piece on a person, check that hem. Uh, you want it when you lay it out, you want it to be nice and even. People have rear ends and the rear end is going to make the back shorter if they did not hem it on the person that they're wearing it. So anybody who does hems professionally would have the person wear the piece, unfinished hem, and sit on the floor. And normally, you would have the person wear the shoes that they intend to wear, so on a wedding dress, on a cloak, on anything that's worn for a special event, they would be required to wear the shoes that they're going to wear for the, the event. Shoes, the underwear, the bra, the... Yes, everything. all of that matters. All of that matters. So whatever they're going to wear for the event, now this is a big event, like a wedding. So on a wedding dress, you would expect more. Feast gear is no different than a wedding dress. This is their big event, so it matters. So they would want to wear the shoes, the whatever. Now I can understand that the hem is slightly shorter than the floor. In real period pieces, they would be at the floor or on the floor at the hem because they are showing how much fabric they had. In modern day society, we don't want to wash our clothes that much. So, uh, or get rid of our clothes, we don't have that kind of money. So in a fancy dress that's going to be worn, it can come to the floor or just maybe an inch above the floor. But it should be even no matter where the hem comes. If it comes to the knee, that's fine too. But it needs to be even all the way around into including the back. So women with hips or rear ends, guys again who have a belly, those pieces need to be considered when putting the hem in. They need to be worn by the person who's going to wear it. And the hem may be long in the front to cover a belly or longer in the back to cover a rear end. They need to be even. So you need to look at it. Now, if the preparer knew that they may not be really happy with their hem, they won't put it on a person. You might want to ask to see it on a person, but that is a judge's prerogative and you need to be careful with that because they have made that physical choice not to put it on a person. Mm -hmm. You probably need to respect that. But again, that's up to you as a judge to decide whether or not you want to see it on the person. If you feel it will help them, ask to see it on a person. But if you really think it's going to deter from them, you might not. So again, you want that nice straight hem and it needs to be even to taking in consideration a butt or a, a belly. Those are items that you need to think about. If they are wearing multiple layers, does they want the aesthetic quality for that underskirt to show? That may very well be what their intention was. They may have raised the overskirt. That's where your write-up comes in. That's okay. where a where your write-up as a judge, you want to read that write-up to see if they wanted that hem to show. If they didn't, that's another issue. But you want to read that write-up. And as a person, as, as a contestant who wants an entrant, who has an entrant, make sure you have a write-up. Okay, that way you can tell them, I want that hymn to show I didn't, you know, uh, you always want to accentuate the positive. Embellishments. This is a beautiful example of embellishments. You can buy trim all put together like this, or as she has done, she has had the gray uh, tan ribbon and added another uh, embellishment over the top to make this layered effect. I love this because now you can feel it. It's really there and it's part of the texture. And it would, in my point, add to the score because it added increased the ability. 
Now, you have to think about it. Now, on a piece like this, this is perfect. This is stunning. However, on a fighting garb, this would be completely impractical. These little edges would catch. They can't be washed. They would hold dirt like nobody's business. So they would be impractical. In fact, I would mark it down on anything that was for fighting garb. Now, there are plenty of flat trims that are one piece of fabric and flat and easy to put on, and they work beautiful. However, beading, uh, braised embroidery, uh, or multiple layers don't really work well on fighting guard, but it is fantastic and adds, this is a very, very simple dress. But because of this beautiful additions, it makes the dress. All she need now is a sash made similar to this for around the waist in possibly a larger pattern if possible, or two, two of these in a larger pattern down the front. And it would be a stunning, stunning piece. Very simple, not a lot of, uh, this is that, that, what I was talking about, about simplicity being beautifully simplistic. It could have all sorts of, of flames and embellishments too, but then this would be a detraction if you had all of that. You wouldn't want this. You would want plain seams if you were going to have lots of work on the center. You gotta think about the overall piece when you're thinking about the complexity. Yes, you want complexity in your pieces, and yes, you want to see complexity, but you don't want it to be too much. We don't want it to be an overly loud commercial. No cacophony. Yes, we want it to blend, and we want it to blend seamlessly. Ha ha ha. And <laughs> that would be what you were looking for. So those are the elements for complexity, and, uh, and the next video will be about execution. Thank you.